All right, welcome to part two of my take on this article, Housing Market Predictions for 2023, When Will Home Prices Be Affordable Again? Uh, this was written last week, July 13th, by Robin Rothstein and Chris Jennings of Forbes Advisor. And uh, so we're going to go ahead and take a look here. We already did part one. We're jumping down here to Housing Inventory Outlook for July of 2023. Uh, so they're saying low housing inventory has been a challenge since the 2008 housing crash. When the construction of new homes plummeted, it still hasn't fully recovered and won't in 2023. 100% accurate. Builders got stuck with a lot of inventory. It put a lot of builders out of business. When the housing market crashed, they got stuck with a lot of homes that they had built and then they couldn't sell. Uh, they were selling them for 50 and 60% off what they had them listed for in 2006 and 2007, uh, sometimes even further than that. And it put a lot of people out of business. So they're not going to risk putting that kind of inventory on the market again. Uh, so they've been very slow, very gradual, and very methodical about the way they build and how many homes they build. Uh, we saw when COVID first hit, there was a concern by a lot of the builders in our area, the big national builders, that that was going to be the thing that crashed the market and uh, that was going to be the end of it. And so we saw for a very brief period in like, uh, I think it was April of 2020, we saw builders taking huge discounts. Um, I had clients that were going under contract on new construction homes at over a hundred thousand dollars, 25, 30, 35% off what the homes were listed for in January. Um, and the people that stuck with those deals, I had a few of them back out after they got cold feet and got scared too. They backed out of the deals, but the people that did close on those homes, oh, let me tell you how happy they are because they've about doubled their money since then in just a couple short years. So, you know, they, but they jumped on it very quickly. Builders are paying very, very close attention to this stuff and they are reacting quickly. So when we saw interest rates spike, Builders immediately, when we saw the, the rate spike last year, early last year, builders immediately jumped on and started offering incentives, interest rate incentives on their inventory homes to get them sold. And then they sold them real quick and then they cut the incentives. And so that's what they're talking about here. Housing supply remains at near historic lows, especially the entry level supply, which is propping up demand and sustaining higher home prices. Even so, they're saying new single-family homes would be are have been coming to the rescue, at least to some extent. They're enticing frustrated buyers to look at new construction um, because there is some inventory here and there. Uh, they're trying to manage it very, uh, very quickly and make sure that they don't get too much. But a lot of the builders do want to have some inventory. So new home sales jumped 12% between April and May. 763 new home, new single family homes selling in May, which is the highest volume since February of 2022, which consequently is around the time interest rates started increasing. Median sale price for new home was 416. And that's a big part of the problem is they are not affordable for a lot of people. Uh, sales of new homes surged by 20% year over year while existing home sales sagged. And the reason existing home sales sagged is because there aren't very many existing homes going on the market because of everybody tied up in those low interest rates. So new construction selling at a pace reminiscent pre-pandemic times, which is what I said in the previous uh, segment on this article, is that basically we are back to pre-pandemic times in terms of sales overall. Existing home sale activity is down, but the new home sales up. Inventory of unsold existing homes grew by 3.8% between April and May. But this only lifts inventory to a three-month supply at current sales pace. Many experts say a balanced market has four to six months. I've always heard it's five to seven. But anyways, in that range, five, six, seven months is considered pretty balanced. Inventory is approximately 40% below the historical average dating back to 99. Which means across the United States, we need 4.3 million new homes according to Zillow's analysis of the numbers. I don't know if that's 100% accurate on the exact number, but there are a lot more houses needed. Need to build more inventory. 
the problem becomes back to that affordability is builders can't start new homes because of permitting issues in some places uh, here in Southwest Florida, especially permitting is taking forever. They've been pulling back on sales incentives to, you know, manage over the last six months, but where is, oh, right here, this next statement here. Uh, even as builders work to meet the demands, they face headwinds, including costlier supplies, challenges obtaining lots, shortage of construction workers, and tighter credit conditions due to the Fed's aggressive interest rate hikes. So yes, those interest rate hikes affect the builders too. Not just on the sales, uh, you know, being able for buyers to get mortgages, but they finance these homes that they're building a lot of times. So it costs them more to borrow the money to build the homes. Supplies are more expensive and harder to get. Lots are more expensive and harder to get. Workers are more expensive and harder to get. So all the way around, it is more and more expensive and what we're seeing is also something that's not mentioned in here, uh, but I have seen come across from a lot of the builders is there are massive costs, regulatory costs in building, um, and a lot of them probably unnecessary. Yes, there are things, I mean, obviously building needs to be regulated, there needs to be building codes, but there are certain things in the codes that are an absolute waste of money. We really need our building departments across the country to look at codes and see what they can do to help make building less expensive if they want these building starts to get moving more, if they want new homes to be built. They've got to look at the building codes and figure out what makes sense and what does, doesn't. Yes, there are absolutely safety concerns and things that have to be done properly, of course. And it's going to be different depending on different regions of the country. But there's a lot of silly things, too, that are absolutely unnecessary. They could also loosen things up and allow more multifamily or allow people to add additional dwelling units. Um, it's a big thing in the really, really expensive markets in California and things like that, where they have done a lot to simplify building codes and to allow people to build what they call ADUs or additional dwelling units on their property, whether it be a build out of a garage or adding a like an apartment into a garage and things like that. Those things aren't necessarily allowed in a lot of different a lot of different areas. And so it makes it real difficult where you theoretically could rent that space out and make some additional income to cover the the high housing costs. And to be able to allow people to purchase a home, uh, live in the main home, and then rent out that uh, that additional space, making things more affordable while interest rates and purchase prices are so high. But a lot of municipalities just aren't interested in looking at that sort of thing. So if we can push that, that would be a huge help as well. So affordabilities, affordability struggle, sideline hopeful buyers. We've been hearing this for the last couple of years for sure where even though there are some areas where home prices are starting to weaken a little bit because of the supply they're not weakening prices are not weakening much certain areas prices are down you know three to four percent in certain parts of the country uh those are the biggest drops which is uh the pacific areas so like along california oregon washington things like that prices have declined about 3.8 percent which you see right here, but uh, different divisions like the East, South, and Central, and New England divisions show six to six, six and six point one percent increases. So there are lots of areas where prices are still going up. There are a few areas where prices are going down a little bit, but even with prices going down, because interest rates are up, it's still not affordable. The house pricing index put out by the Federal Housing Finance Authority shows a record high of 401.2 in April, meaning that it is a record for the fact that homes are unaffordable. That's what we're looking at. And they pull this information. These are single family home values across all 50 states, pulling data from 400 cities to come up with these numbers, and then also looking at the mortgage interest rates. So it's tough. It is still, it's very tough to buy a home right now. 
So median home price is down from the eye-watering June 2022 peak. Prices have been creeping back up since February, which we have seen here locally as well. They are, our peak was uh, April of 2022, dropped, especially the hurricane. And then they've been creeping back up and they're pretty much back to that April number now. Median and existing home sale price, 396.1. So a brand new home, median price on a brand new home is 401000 And on an existing home, you're 396 Personally, if you're only talking a $5,000 difference between a brand new home and an existing home, I'm buying a new home anyways, because why not? It's got new everything, right? So really what we need to do is this last sentence right here. And this is kind of what I was talking about with municipalities looking at building codes, potentially allowing additional dwelling units, things like that, addressing the shortage of smaller, more affordable starter type homes. If we don't do that, we risk leaving families without a seat and will only get worse over time. I would say without a roof, but you know, semantics, right? So what we're looking at here is there's just not enough affordable housing and it's hard to build affordable housing. It's really hard to build affordable single family homes because they go on the same size lots as big houses. And when you put them on the same size lot, your land costs, your development costs, your infrastructure costs are the same, whether the house is a, a small 1,000, 1,200, 1,400 square foot single family home, two or three bedrooms, things like that. It doesn't really make that much of a difference. The house itself, the construction of the house, unless you're putting super high end, like entry level versus super, super high end finishes in it, the houses, the, the cost to build the house, the, the structure itself is not that different. And if your land cost is the same, then you got to sell your small starter homes for the same price almost as the bigger homes. There's just not enough room. And so the way to solve that, smaller lots, higher density. I know people don't always want to talk about that. Uh, especially in Florida, where it's like the smallest lots you're going to find in a lot of areas. I mean, in in uh, some of the bigger cities and the older, like in the Tampa area and things like that, the uh, the older sections where the lots are seven, eight, nine, ten thousand square feet. You know, those those six and seven and eight thousand square foot lots. That's better density. You can put more homes on the same amount of land when everything's a quarter acre and you're looking at twelve and thirteen and fourteen thousand square foot lots and you're trying to put a 1,000 or 1,200 square foot home on it, why? Split them, put two. But the municipalities don't allow that. The smallest lots that you can do in a lot of areas in Southwest Florida are roughly quarter acre lots. So and it makes it difficult to have walkability. It makes it difficult for people to get around without a car. These are the things that we need to start looking at and developing to help make homes more affordable for more people. So we are going to stop here. We'll talk about the big bold words at the bottom of the screen with the housing market crash in 2023. We'll talk about on the talk about that on the next one. Thanks for watching.